Today, as we talk about uh, living in love, we're talking about love your family. And, um, and we, read, we read from uh, the Ten Commandments, the Big Ten. Uh, we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 6 as, uh, as we hear a little bit about what does it look like to live love, and we're going to discuss a little bit about what does it look, to, look like to live love within a loving relationship uh, with, with your family. And, um, and so if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 1. If you don't, no sweat, it's going to be right up here. And, uh, and, he, and we get to hear God's Word. Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 1, reading in Jesus' name. Children! You guys out there? Here, here's the hard part. I mean, because all of you, I, I saw some big smiles from parents, because they were like, oh, I... I like this one. But parents, you do remember that you too are someone's child. So this is for you too. So don't be all too smiley about it before it gets all crazy. Okay? Children, that's all of you. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the, the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, this is where the moms get to smile. Just go ahead, look at the father, you know, smile, give him a big, big old smile and say, this one's for you, buddy. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Here ends the reading of God's word. I I think love is so awesome. And, and, and the love that we have within our family is a different kind of love. It's great. I love it. But it's a little bit different. I looked throughout the, you know, the, the Ten Commandments, read a bunch of the epistles in the, in the New Testament where it's talking about you know, family love and stuff like that. Here's an interesting thing. I, I didn't see any command that says, mothers, love your kids. Ironically, God's word doesn't feel like that needs to happen. I don't know if that's because um, it happens more naturally, or is that one of those like unspoken commands, or, or what? But there's, there's no overt thing that says, hey, mom and dad, love your kids. You don't have to get too far into the summer and if you hop onto Facebook, you will see kids of all ages drive their parents crazy. But moms and dads love their kids. The command is to the children, like this, this big reminder, this big thing of just saying, look, if you want to have you know, a, a, a family that is loving and following God's way, um, the, the way in which you, you structure that family and live in that family is to, is to love your parents, is to obey your parents, is to honor your parents. And, it, and so, like, there's a certain section of life where obey your parents really, you know, is, is the rule. And then, you know, you get married, and you leave and cleave, and, uh, you know, and you've, you, know, you moved in, and you start another household, and then you're, you know, and all of a sudden, you're not as concerned, it, once you're an adult, you're not as concerned about obeying your parents, and so it shifts into honor your parents, and what does that look like? Well, honor your parents looks a lot like loving them. And so when we look at the scriptures, and we see, uh, you know, children obey your parents, and, you know, and I, and I don't see this, this, you know, like, parents love your kids. It reminds me of, I totally didn't realize you were going to be here, Becca. Uh, it, but it, re, it reminds me of driving Becca home from the hospital right after she was born. Rebecca was born in Jersey. Um, I, the traffic in Jersey is insane. I'm just going to say it's insane. And it's hard to explain the traffic in Jersey um, other than this, that you could be on the New Jersey Turnpike, 
Now, there's two main highways through New Jersey, okay? There's the New Jersey Turnpike and the Garden State Parkway, okay? New Jersey Turnpike, ha you know, has, has a few, you know, tolls going, you know, going through it. But I, what I want to try and help you understand, this is not New York City. This is just south of New York City. You're going into Jersey. I want you to stop and think about 16 lanes of traffic going nowhere. That's right. Stop and go traffic, bumper to bumper, 16 lanes. Yeah, there's, um, there's, a, a, there's a trucks and cars, you know, group of lanes, and there's, and, and there's four, okay? And then there's another four for cars only. Those are both heading north. Going south, you've got another four and four. So that's right, eight lanes going in each direction, bumper to bumper, insanity. I was so excited the day that Becca was born. So excited. I was so excited and so stupid. I knew nothing. I mean, like, so I had not even held a, an infant until about six, six months easy into Heidi's pregnancy with Rebecca. I had never held an infant. It was weird. And, and, and then Rebecca is born, and, and it's just like this life-changing thing. And um, I was the worst possible dad at like, changing diapers and putting clothing on. And then when they asked me to strap Rebecca into her car seat and take her home, I was terrified. Because traffic in New Jersey is insane. And I got on, you know, I, we, we, I, we finally got her. Heidi is the one who put the diaper and changed the clothes. And I tried doing like the, the car seat thing, but Heidi really did the majority of the work. She's like, no, no, tighter than that. And I'm like, oh, don't break her. I was so afraid that I was going to break Rebecca. We got her into the car. We've got her strapped into the, you know, the, you know, the Pontiac Grand Prix in the back seat. And I'm like, good, lots of metal, bigger car. I didn't bring the Honda. The Honda seemed small, and, and that seemed just dangerous to me. Uh, you know, we're in, we're in the Pontiac Grand Prix. It's got a lot of big American steel around it. And I'm driving home with Rebecca, you know, like tightly strapped into a car seat, and, you know, and then tightly strapped into the back seat. And, and I'm driving on the road. And I'm like, don't these people realize I'm driving Rebecca home? I wanted like a bubble of protection around me. I'm like, like there should be like a force field or something. Like these people drive like insane people. And I said something and Heidi just looked at me like, you are the insane people. <laughs> it's, that, it's that love for our kids that just, it, it is a little crazy. We, the love for our kids that just wants to protect them and keep them safe, no matter what age they are, and, 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 just, and the dangers maybe look like a little bit different. And so I, ha I did get to a place where I was much more comfortable driving Rebecca in the car. And then just about the time I was feeling like, oh, I can, I'm comfortable with this. I can, I can drive Rebecca. Then all of a sudden she's driving herself. And then she like drove herself without me. And, 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 and the, the whole concept is just, you know, lovingly terrifying. Lovingly terrifying. So that's my description of parenting. It's, it, you know, it's lovingly terrifying. And, and, and for kids, no matter what age we are, the command for us is to obey or honor our parents. So what does it look like to love your kids? What does it look like to love your parents? What do you think? In your life, what is loving your kids or loving your parents, what does that look like?
serving your parents. Okay? Asking for advice. <laughs> Asking for advice, then taking that advice. That looks like love. Listening, it looks like listening. I don't know how many... Uh, and it's funny how many times we listen to each other, but listening changes, right? You ever have a conversation with a two-year-old? All the time. How's that listening going? I love listening to kids before they know what they're saying. I really do, because I'm, I'm the person who just like agrees with everything with enthusiasm. As kids are just kind of babbling away, I'm like, yes, let's do that! And then off they go, and Heidi's like, what did you say? You know, uh, listening to two-year-olds, they make more sense now. And, and yet at the same time, it's, it's, it's sometimes like an exercise in patience as they're getting the actual sentence out. Once they get a little older, then you're listening, and you're listening for what they are saying, but also what they're not saying. I left out a lot of things when talking to my parents. How's school today? Great! How'd that test go? Great! Really? Do you have any trouble? Because you didn't seem to study very much. Great! Sometimes listening is, uh, is, more, is just as much about what we're not saying as it is about what we're saying. Those conversations and change, you get to be parenting teenagers and and you're staying up late nights, and, and, and you're, you're, you're sitting on the floor, or they're sitting in your bed, or you're, you know, or you're sitting in the living room, and you're having these listening conversations late into the night. I, I don't understand why we as teenagers, like, we feel like this, this insatiable need to open up late at night, but that is often when it happens. It doesn't happen on Saturday at, like, noon. Weird. We keep listening to each other and then listening to our parents when we're adults, you know, and, and, and fighting the urge for us to say, I know, the whole time. And then listening to our parents a little bit later as, as, the, as they're aging is another another time when we listen with patience because we don't have any idea what they're going through. Listening. Living in a loving relationship within our family looks like listening. What else? What does it look like for us to live in a loving relationship? What does it look like for us to love our kids? What does it look like for us to obey or honor our parents as it says in God's word? It looks like forgiving. Forgiving. Communication. Physical touch, hugging. Sometimes even when they don't want to be hugged. Praising. What? Praising. Yeah, praising. Encouraging, building up. <laughs> Spending time together. Yeah. At different points in your, in, in, you know, in your relationship with your parents or your kids, you know, um, spending time can be really, really challenging. That's why, I, you know, our, our family for a while, we were doing forced family fun. The kids were going all over the place. There was soccer games. There was this game. There was that thing. All sorts of things happening. Forced family fun. We, we clear out the schedule. This is the day we're going to do it. This is the time we're going to do it. Everybody is required to be in the car and dressed appropriately for our specific activity. What are we going to do? I don't know. I did know, but I didn't like to tell them because, like, if I told them before they got in the car, there would be, a, like, a lot, a really often a negative response. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it takes a little bit of time to transform forced family fun into fun. So I, right? But we need it. We need that time together. What about for you? What is, what is 
it look like for you to love your children? What does it look like for you to love your parents? What does it look like to live in a loving family relationship? What does that look like for you? Sacrifice. sacrifice. Looks like sacrifice. Commitment. commitment. Somebody else said something. Prayer. prayer. Looks like prayer. Non stop on your knees. Yes. What does it look like to live in a loving family <laughs> as the family is growing? It what? It looks stressful. <laughs> I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks stressful. <laughs> it looks active. It looks like uh, looks like sitting on the floor. It looks like reading books. Sometimes five books a night. It looks like getting a drink of water. What does it look like to, to honor our parents? You got different age, age segments. What does it look like for us to honor our parents? What do you think? We've got a nice multi-generational church here, and so we have a, a great broad perspective on what does it look like for us to honor our parents? Treat them with honor. Serving. What else? Respect. Looks like respect. Ask for their advice. Helping, helping them out. Yeah. What's that? Sharing your life. Yep. Big things, little things. Hey, let, letting parents know what on earth is going on. What does it look like for you to honor your parents? Parents, your, all of your parents are all in different age, you know, brackets or whatever. What does it look like? It looks like time. Yeah. What else? Praying. Looks like a lot of prayer. Memories. Oh man, a lot of memories. Uh, one of the one of the fun things about having Russ live with us, Heidi's dad, is um, is we just get to hear all sorts of things. We get to hear all sorts of memories, you know. And so it also looks like listening. What else? What does it look like for you, for living in a loving family and to honor your parents, your mother and father? Laugh together. Laugh together. Yeah, that's the best. Love together. That's right. I have um, I had two sets of two sets of grandparents, and um, it was interesting to watch um, my parents honor their their parents differently. They're different people, right? And my um, my father's um, parents. My his dad um, died. Uh, of, of cancer, and his, and his mom continued to live on the golf course in Florida, in, and, in Daytona Beach, Florida. And, um, and she, she stayed in Florida, and, and, and that's where she wanted to stay. She said that she couldn't leave Florida because of the three men in her life. Yeah. Her attorney, her accountant, and her stockbroker. Um, um, she, Took a little while to, for her to realize that we could leave Florida and still maintain a relationship with the three men in her life, um, you know. But that's what that was her concept. And 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 and, uh, and as she um, as she got a little bit older, and um, uh, we got calls from neighbors saying that um, that she was forgetting things, and we knew that there was some dementia starting. And um, she was a very organized lady. And they loved cocktail parties, and, uh, and, 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 and so she just started to have, like, these stacks of papers all over the place of, like, lists for reminders to, of things to do. And then all of a sudden, you know, we just started getting more phone calls from the neighbors just saying, hey, I think you guys really need to come down. And, and we needed to move my grandmother away from Florida, and she really didn't want to leave, but honoring her didn't look like doing what she wanted, honoring, 
honoring my dad honoring her mom looked like doing what was best for her, and that was moving her up to Iowa into um, into a, uh, a new home. It was an, uh, a senior living apartment building that was going to be, you know, graduated from from uh, living solo all the way through an Alzheimer's care unit. And that was what it, honoring her looked like. The last thing she wanted and the number one thing that my father's father requested was that she not live with my father. That was, that was a big, huge priority for them. On the other side, my mom's, my, my mom's side, my, my, my mom's father also died of, uh, died of cancer, and then my mom's mom stayed in Pennsylvania for a little while, but she, she didn't do well living on her own. And so um, she moved, she sold the house and then built an apartment connected to my Uncle Mike's house. And she, all she wanted to do was be with family. And so it looks different, you know, honoring one, you know, mom versus honoring another mom looked totally different. One mom didn't want ever to live with, with my dad, and the other mom, you know, really wanted to live with family. And so honoring l- will look differently for different people because that's what honoring is. And, and so when we, we don't love each other exactly the same, we don't obey our parents exactly the same as we grow, we don't honor everybody exactly the same uh, because we are different people. And I think that, you know, God is super intentional about saying, fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. It is not surprising to me that this is not written to moms. I'm not saying that moms don't do this because some of you do, right? But dads like seem to have like a special gift for provoking their children. I have a special gift for provoking my children, all four of them. And anybody else who seems to come along. I can provoke boyfriends and girlfriends equally. No problem. I don't have, matter of fact, <laughs> I was provoking Becca before she was born. So when, when Becca was in the womb, actually all the kids, when they were in the womb, I had this game that I like to play. I know it's going to sound kind of weird, but it's a little game that I like to play. I love playing with my kids. And so when, uh, when, when, when one of our kids was in, uh, in, in the womb, in Heidi's womb, and, you know, that wonderful magical moment when the, when the kiddo just kind of like stretches out a hand or stretches out a foot and you just kind of see a little, little push out on the belly, you know? I like to push back. Becca was especially gifted at this game. She'd push, I'd push back. She'd push, I'd push back. It was until, until Heidi was done with us playing. <laughs> Um, dads, don't provoke your kids to anger. And I don't know if, if Becca was getting angry in the womb, but I can tell you one thing, that as things progressed, as the kids got older, I know exactly how to provoke them to anger. It takes zero effort for me to provoke my kids to anger. It's like, it's like a superpower. Like I know exactly where their weaknesses are, and I'm like, yes, I can irritate them so easily. It takes no effort whatsoever in the morning. (laughs) Even late at night. And yet God's word is here saying, look, live in a loving relationship with your parents, but also love your kids. Love them enough that dads don't provoke them to anger. Don't just poke them. And so as we get together and we're talking about how we live in relationship, how do we live in a way that we're just not angering each other intentionally. It doesn't stop stop when they're little. I was uh, was in my early 20s. My dad stopped by the bathroom as I was getting ready for work. And, And he just stuck his head in, you know, to say goodbye as he was heading to work. And he said, oh yeah, hey, Pack up all your stuff and be out of the house before I get home. And then he closed the door. And, you know, and I, it was, my dad was super gifted. At, like, there was no anger in his voice at all. 
I could definitely tell he was disappointed. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Uh, and, and, you know, and Im- immediately I was, I was freaked out. Did, did my dad just tell me to get out? And so, like, I, I threw on clothes as fast as I could to try to catch him before he left. And, I, you know, and I'm catching my dad, and, you know, and I catch him down in the kitchen, and we're both having a cup of coffee, and I'm like, hey, did I hear you right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. If you could just, like, pack everything up and, and get out, I'd really appreciate it. You know? And I'm like, what is up? And he's like, well, I was talking to your mom, and, uh, and she told me about the way you've been treating her lately. And, and so, like, if, if you're going to live in this house, then you're going to have to treat, you know, your mom with, with love and respect. And if, you, and if you can't do that, it's, it's no problem. It's no problem. Just pack your crap up and get out. Oh! He was serious as a heart attack. Finished up his cup of coffee. I don't know. I literally, I don't know how he kept his cool. Because, like... I don't know how he kept his cool. I don't know if that was, I don't even think he was trying to provoke me to anger. I, but I got angry, but I also like w- was lovingly terrified. I didn't have any place else to live. But that wasn't the real problem. The real problem was that I, I wasn't honoring my mom. I wasn't treating her with love and respect. So my dad modeled for me a way to not provoke his kids to anger, but still require a loving relationship within our family that honors our parents and doesn't provoke our kids. I took my mom out for lunch and apologized. I still moved all my stuff into my car just to be safe. (laughs) Dad said I could stay. When we look at what does it look like to live within a loving family, it looks like honoring our father and mother and living in a loving relationship with them. And it looks like not provoking our kids, not just like play the poke game. Believe me, the poke game didn't end when my children were born. I still poke them. I just have to run faster now. I still poke them, and so some of those pokes are, are verbal, and, and I, some of them are physical, and sometimes what I need to do is I, I need to be willing to confess my sin, apologize, ask for forgiveness, and and love my kids without provoking them, and draw them into a loving relationship where they can honor me and honor Heidi. And so as we look at living in love, living in love is, you know, includes the entire family. And I'm going to ask you, we're planning on one more week in, in our series, Living Love, and I'm going to ask you for some of your stories. I'm going to get onto Facebook, I'll, you know, and, and, uh, and I'll, I'll put like a little synopsis on there too, since I know a lot of people aren't here uh, today. But I'm going to ask you, as just, just as we've been um, going through living love and, and living uh, in, in loving relationships, and what does that look like in our individual life before God? What does that look like in, uh, in our marriage? What does it look like in our communication? What does it look like in our forgiveness? And what does it look like in our family? What does it look like in our physical relationship with our spouses? You know, living in love, and I'm just going to ask you to share some of your stories with me. And, um, and, and then next week, we're going we're gonna to kind of try to wrap together some of the the loving stories that you're willing to share what does it look like for you to live in love 
so that we can share those stories with each other and, and spur each other on to living in loving relationships. God's doing some great stuff. And he's doing some great stuff in our, in our families that, you know, that gather together. He's drawing us to himself, and he's, and he's bringing people together in loving relationships. I, we've received a lot of positive feedback you know, through this uh, loving series, and, and we just want to be able to have a format where we can share some of those stories. Okay? So that's what we're looking forward to. If you've got some stories, hey, write them down. Give me a call, whatever. Email is in the bulletin, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you want to say. And if you've got a picture to share, share a picture with me. If you've got a, you know, if you want to put it on a video because you can't be here next week, put it on a video. Let me know how you want to tell your loving story. And, uh, and, and we're going to find a way to, to share um, some of the, the lo- living love stories uh, with the entire, you know, uh, community and, uh, and, and really try to um, move us forward. And, and because what Jesus said uh, shortly before he, he dies on the cross, which is living love, shortly before he, he's taken up into heaven, he says that, that people will know we are his followers by our love for one another. So let's share these loving stories with each other. Let's pray. God, you're awesome, and, uh, and we can't thank you enough for loving us. We are imperfect people who don't love each other well. We love selfishly. We love expecting something in return. We keep track and we remember the wrongs done to us. And and Lord, we ask you for forgiveness. Thank you for loving us perfectly, for giving your Son. Living love for you, Heavenly Father, looked like giving your one and only Son to be our Savior. Help us to love each other the way you love us. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. As I was uh, preparing for this week, I, uh, I came across an article, and the, the, the picture in the article had, uh, w- was one of these really sweet like, like pictures of a, of a mom holding a child and, and just saying, will you do anything you know, for the one you love? And then you could see in Sharpie written over this beautiful picture, you don't know my mother. She stole my driver's license and my identity, took out 15 credit cards and racked up a bunch of debt and then took off and I haven't seen her since. It's true. We don't know everybody's mom. We don't know everybody's dad. And, and, and I know that there's, there's plenty of kids who have really hurt their, their parents. And that loving and living in a loving relationship, it isn't all rainbows and unicorns, and it is not always easy. And this, this message has been filled with law. I started it in the Ten Commandments, and I just kept on driving that law bus all the way through. But if you look at the end of Ephesians, I'd like to leave you with a little gospel. Peace be to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all of you who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incomparable. We love because he first loved us. And the love that we have for him was a gift. His love, his faith came from him. And that's the love that we love him with and that's the love that he gives us to love each other with. Even if they steal your driver's license, your identity, take out 15 credit cards, rack up a mountain of debt, and take off. I'm not saying that living in a loving relationship or a loving family doesn't hurt. I'm just saying that the love that we need 
comes from an inexhaustible source. We have, God has more than enough love to give. He never runs out. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look right at you and give you his peace. Amen? Go in peace.